Remote identification or remote ID for drones in the United States starts September 16th, whether you want it to or not. So what are you going to do about it? Hi, I'm Ken Bouvier with UAV Coach. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do about it, but first, let's get a few things set straight. First, what is remote ID? The FAA says that in its most basic form, it's like a digital license plate for drones. This means an electronic signal that's broadcast by a drone that can be seen by other people. And we'll talk more about that later. Next, why do we need a digital license plate? Per the FAA, the remote identification of unmanned aircraft is necessary to ensure public safety and the safety and efficiency of the airspace of the United States. Remote identification provides airspace awareness to the FAA, national security agencies, law enforcement entities, and other government officials. The information can be used to distinguish compliant airspace users from those that are potentially posing a safety or security risk. We have until September 16th to install our digital license plate, or in other words, be compliant with the remote ID rule. So how do we do that? Basically, it's one of three ways. The first is free, and it's probably already been done for you if you own one of the Autel Evo series drones, a DJI Mini 3 or Mini 3 Pro, any of the DJI Mavic 3 drones, the DJI Air 2S, the current Skydio drones, or several others found on the FAA Declaration of Compliance website. We'll have the link below. Remote ID is installed on these drones during a firmware update, and if you've kept your drone's firmware updated, you should be good. The bottom line is to check the FAA Declaration of Compliance website before September 16th, and if your drone model is listed there, make sure your firmware is current. The second way is not free and has not been done for you if your drone is not on the FAA Declaration of Compliance website. This way is to obtain a remote ID module. Keep in mind that if you have a Mavic 2 Pro by DJI, currently there is no firmware update that brings remote ID. DJI does plan to update the firmware but just not by the September 16th deadline. There are a few modules that are approved, which you can also find on the FAA Declaration of Compliance website. Examples are the Bluemark DB120 or the DroneTag Remote ID modules. The Bluemark is about $150 and the DroneTag is either $200 or $300 depending on the model. There are definitely cheaper modules available that require you to wire the module to the drone power source. The third way is to fly in an FAA recognized identification area or a FRIA. A FRIA is a defined geographic area where drones can be flown without remote ID equipment. Both the drone and the pilot must be located within the FRIA's boundaries throughout the operation. In addition, the pilot of the drone must be able to see it at all times throughout the duration of the flight. Only FAA recognized community-based organizations or CBOs, such as the Academy of Model Aeronautics or First Person View Freedom Coalition and educational institutions are eligible to submit requests to have a FRIA. Something to be aware of is that a drone equipped with a standard remote ID cannot be disabled or shut off while flying in a FRIA. So now we know what remote ID is and how to comply with the rule, but who cares? And who's going to be monitoring drones with remote ID? I was wondering that exact question. Is the FAA going to be monitoring drones using remote ID? I don't think so, at least not yet. The current methods for monitoring remote ID are Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which both don't transmit that far. So I don't think the FAA or air traffic control is going to be monitoring you while you're flying. Drone Tag states that for their modules, Bluetooth has a range of about two miles, which isn't very far. I wasn't able to find any specs from the drone manufacturers on how far their remote ID transmitters are going to work. This got me thinking some more. The FAA states that remote ID is intended to also help law enforcement. So you would think that the FAA 
must be communicating with law enforcement agencies across the country, right? Well, that's not the case how I found it. I have a few different police departments in the metropolitan area where I live. So I did some research to find out which departments have part 107 drone pilots and a drone program. And I reached out to the police chiefs at those departments. I wanted to see if they would sit down with me and talk to me about drones in general, but also remote ID from the perspective of how they plan to use it. I was under the impression that law enforcement agencies had some real high fidelity app that they will use for capturing remote ID signals, but that's not the case. So I asked these police chiefs, does the FAA communicate with your agency and have they given you training, the education, the tools needed to use remote ID for identifying drones and the control station? And the answer was no. I will say that because these departments have officers that are part 107 certified, they are familiar with what remote ID is. A detective that I spoke with said that if they do find a drone after September 16th that's flying without remote ID, they will turn the information over to the FAA for federal prosecution. That said, he also said they don't actively look for illegally flying drones unless there's something like a wildfire where they need to make sure that the airspace is clear. So let's take a quick look at some of the remote ID apps that are out there now, including one app that's set up for law enforcement or government agencies. But again, the FAA has not established a standard app for these agencies or trained them on how to use any of the apps. I did my testing using Drone Scanner, Open Drone ID, Air Sentinel, and Drone Tag. There's probably a lot more out there. Comments and complaints that I've heard about Remote ID are things like law enforcement being able to use Remote ID to track drones and control stations of pilots who are flying drones illegally or unsafe, and also complaints from the drone community about being able to locate the control station for someone who's flying legally and People just get upset and try to find where the person is to track them down and, and possibly hurt them. So I'm gonna do a couple of tests using the drone scanner app and also the Air Sentinel app to see how those apps act and see if they do accurately identify the aircraft ID, the control station location, to see if the apps are active or static. Will they follow the drone as it's flying? So we'll be able to see in the app, the drone's location, and also be able to test the app as far as how long it takes to locate the drone. How quickly does it receive the signal and, and how far can the drone be away before the app loses the signal? For these tests, I used the DJI Air 2S because it has the standard remote ID and the firmware has been updated, so it should be able to transmit the remote ID information. I flew the drone up to 100 feet in height and then moved it away about 100 feet away from the takeoff point. In this case, I'm using the drone scanner app, so we launched that and for this test, the information in the, I, the drone showed up almost immediately. Other tests, it has taken uh, several minutes actually. Now what you'll see is it brings up a map and if you pull up the detailed information, you can see connection information, you can see aircraft ID, uh, the location of the drone, and then you also at the bottom see a section for operator. And now this would be the control station or where the pilot is. It does give you location information about where the control station is and how far away it is from you standing there with this app. Now, if you go into the map, you can see that it identifies the drone, the red pinpoint, and the control station, the yellow pinpoint. And then you see the, the blue dot is where the person is with the app, in this case, me. And I kind of did a simulation. I had someone hold the control station, I moved over with my phone and tried to sort of find where the control station is using the map. It actually did work fairly 
well, I will say. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Next, I wanted to test if the app keeps up with drone movement and to kind of check from a distance if it would still receive the remote ID. Now, as you can see here, I'm flying the drone away and nothing's moving on the map. So what I did is I went out to about 2000 feet, I hovered in position and just waited. And it took several minutes to update, but the app finally did update the location of the drone and it kind of drew a straight line to where it was. Then I immediately launched the return to home feature and you can see that as the drone is returning, the map is not updating, it's not moving. And I got all the way down, I landed the drone and I relaunched the drone just a few feet away and just hovered in place there. As the drone was hovering, then the map finally did update and showed that now we're back where the drone was. So there's definitely a delay. Then I took the control station with me and I moved with the, the app and the control station away from the location where we were to see if the control station pin would update on the map. And it didn't until the drone was actually at a critical battery and had to land and then the control station pin moved. So it's kind of interesting. Next, I launched the Air Sentinel app. Basically did the same scenario, up to 100 feet and then 100 feet away. And it took a little bit of time for it to update, longer than the drone scanner. Now, one thing you'll notice here, the information it has is roughly the same as drone scanner. However, Air Sentinel doesn't include operator information. So this app doesn't appear to have information about where the control station is. So you don't know where the pilot is using the Air Sentinel app. I did the same scenario where I flew the drone away about 2000 feet and I just waited, I hovered in position and waited for the app to update and find the drone. Again, it was several minutes. And then I launched the return to home again and kind of watched it come back. Again, the app doesn't update uh, in real time. I will say I'm pretty certain this is just because of how the Wi-Fi scanning on the Android phones works where it doesn't update in real time. It scans periodically, so you're only going to get updates when it does that scan. Now this one did update the return actually quicker so I was able to see as it was coming back, it updated where the drone was. Now I mentioned I was going to tell you what I'm going to do about Remote ID. First, I believe that Remote ID or some form of it will be helpful in managing the national airspace system when it comes to things like drone delivery, unmanned traffic management, or even to prevent unlawful drone flights in places like major league sporting events. But for now, I don't see that Remote ID is going to be very helpful in its current state, but I also don't see that it's gonna have much of a negative impact either. I have multiple drones that are Remote ID compliant, and it didn't cost me anything for them to get that way just through firmware updates. So basically for now, I'm going to do nothing. As far as my non-compliant drones are concerned, I'm probably just going to wait to see how DJI comes out with firmware updates for those drones, or maybe to see if the modules become lower in price. Now, don't forget that for your drones that are registered and are remote ID compliant, don't forget to go to the FAA's Drone Zone website and update your registration to indicate that these drones are remote ID compliant. So that's all for this video. I hope this has been helpful in helping you understand a little bit more about remote ID as a whole picture. And hopefully it helps you decide what you wanna do about remote ID and what you wanna do before September 16th. So until next time, all of us here at UAV Coach, we wish you blue skies and safe flying. We'll see you next time.